actually I have Michael and then Kareem and then LeBron. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because the whole thing between Michael Jordan and LeBron James, the debate was settled in two different um, parts of the discussion. Number one. What's up, Heard That Nation? Listening in the United States and around the world, you are now listening to the Heard That with Marisa Tigney podcast. If you happen to be watching right now on YouTube, hit that subscribe button so you stay in the know of every new episode and guest that I have on the show. This one is absolutely phenomenal. He is a CEO. I think he's one of the very few CEOs that I've had on this show so far, but he's CEO and creator of the Shake Back Media Group. Uh, he is a life coach. He is a mentor. Uh, he is, what I hear, a great grilling guru. So I'm going to have to try some of his amazing food. Since we do live in the great state of Texas, I'm so excited to introduce to everybody Willie Epting Jr. Welcome to the Heard That Podcast. Yes. What is that I hear? <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> I'm on the Mama. I'm on the Heard That podcast. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Sissy, for having me. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity to grace your platform. Um, we've had a we've, we. This has been a long time coming. Yeah. Um, so I'm very very excited to be here. Oh, I'm I'm so thrilled to have you here, and uh, you have done some amazing things. I can't believe that the Shake Back Media Group has only been in existence since 2019. It feels like many of the the shows if you've done and listeners and those that are watching he is on weekly and he will drop his media handles at the end of the show and you definitely want to connect with him uh you have had so many great episodes great guests on your show uh some inspirational episodes which we will talk about momentarily where it's just not just about sports but uh definitely some uh incredible people that you've had and some episodes that you have done on your own but i want to talk about your media group because you and I had talked about before coming on, uh, starting the show, that there are people out there that, you know, are starting a podcast or into the media realm and everything else. And you have started yours, you and your lovely wife have started the Shake Back Media Group in 2019. How did you get that started? Was, was it an idea that you've had for a long time? Who inspired you? Talk about uh, how all of that came to being. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a Shake Back uh, and it's it was a vision that was given to me by, you know, the Jesus, the, the Jesus, the Christ himself, mm -hmm. the Messiah, the one who saves us all from everything. And basically I had I was in an outfit. I shouldn't call it an outfit because it was three of it was it, it was three of it. it was me, my younger brother and one of his best friends. And it was called the In the Zone Sports Show. Mm -hmm. And uh, we hooked up with the Big Game Christian Sports Network out here in Dallas. And uh, we did that for a few years. And then some, some differences occurred between the three of us. I wound up leaving that group. And I tossed and turned and lost sleep and laughed and cried about uh, what should I do? You know, should I start my own thing? Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't an overnight decision. I mean, it wasn't an overnight execution of a plan. You know, I, I tossed and turned over it for a good, I don't know, nine, 10, maybe up to a year. Oh, wow. And I actually um, would ask my boys at the barbershop, yo, man, what y'all think I should do? And they were like, you need to go ahead and do it. You need to stop asking us what we need to do and you need to go ahead and do it. Mm -hmm. um, so finally, after a long time of contemplating and prayer and looking for the, the, the confirmation, I got it. Um, and then it happened. Uh, started out uh, as the well, me and my brother had a show called the Hashtag Brothers of Baseball Show. Mm -hmm. um, that's something that we created together. That was part of the In the Zone Sports Group. Um, but then, you know, he he decided to step away from that. I kept it going. It's still going to this day. Mm -hmm. So it started out as the Shake Back Sports Report. And then I thought, well, wait a minute, it can't be just that because uh, it's not just the report. So it went to the Shake Back Sports Show. It went to the Shake Back Sports Show. Mm -hmm. And then I said, well, wait a minute. I can't just have just have it just the show because I still have the hashtag brothers of baseball show. 
So I said, okay, it's the Shake Back Media Group. Mm-hmm. And from those two shows, um, I mean, we're fully incorporated in Texas, LLC, all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's Shake Back Media Group, LLC. And from those two shows, it has now grown into four other shows uh, and of which I have met so many wonderful people like you on Twitter. Um, I've, I'm also a, uh, a frequent guest or really co-host on Her in the Huddle uh, with Rachel Hill. You met Rachel, I believe. Yes. Um, she was on the show with us before. Um, met her on Twitter. So I've been with her on her show for the last couple of years. And now I am in the process of building the media group brand. Mm-hmm. I've got other people that are wanting to join up with us. Uh, I got a couple here that are going to be joining pretty pretty soon. Hopefully, they're just trying to iron some things out, mm-hmm. and uh, we're still can- we're just going to still continue to grow this thing. It's not all about sports. The whole story about the shake back is that I had to shake back from that adversity in terms of the turmoil that I was going on inside of me when I decided to leave the group that my brother started and all of the things that went along with that. Um, But it's not just for sports. Like I said, it's whatever walk of life you're in, somebody has a shake shake back story. I don't care if it's sports, uh, corporate, uh, spiritual church, Mm -hmm. you know, relationships that everybody has a, a shake back story. So even though sports is the foundation of what we, where we started, Mm-hmm. Um, my wife ha- now has a podcast. It's called "Don't Jump the Podcast," that is going to be centered around uh, mental health for women and for Black women. And then she's going to dive into relationships. Uh, I'll be a guest on her show at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, all of that is part of the SBMG. See, has you not taken the risk? And I want people to catch what you just said—that mm-hmm. you had to leave one group for the stirring and all the ideas that happen for the current journey that you are to start your own group, your own company. And had Mm -hmm. you been with the previous, none of this would have came to pass. And I think that's something that's something that someone needs to hear when it comes to wanting to achieve a goal or a lifelong dream of theirs, that there are some things that they would need to need to leave and, or to break free from, or you're going to have to drop some people off mm-hmm. in order for you to take those next steps to get to where you want to go. Right. That's so yeah. good. That, that, uh, that's a, that's for somebody. You're so you're that, what you just said is definitely for somebody and I hope somebody had received that. Yeah. And the bottom line is that we, we may love people, mm-hmm. but we can't take everybody where we're going. Some people yeah. are just not ready to go. Mm-hmm. And if we happen to, if we happen to continue to, uh, really hinder ourselves because we won't, br- we want to bring people with us, then we'll never get there ourselves. And you know how it is. I mean, people that are closest to you will be the last ones to support you until they see you start doing th- certain things. And I'm not, I'm not disparaging any one individual that's how it is as Mm -hmm. humans that's what we do for whatever reason Mm -hmm. especially in the community of people that are the same shade of color that you and I are right it's just what it is at some point somebody's gonna have to step forth and say you know what we're gonna break this generational curse we're gonna stop this madness that includes so much jealousy and hatred and hating on people Mm -hmm. and understand that there's enough out here for us all to eat exactly Exactly. I like how you said that. Speaking of breaking through and, uh, you know, years of struggle and so forth, I see in the background, those that are watching on YouTube, he has the Raiders symbol up. And I know that he does not want to talk about the previous season with their six and 11 struggle that they have gone through. So your Las Vegas Raiders have made some acquisitions and some drop offs, one being the uh, former quarterback, David Carr, who is now a New Orleans Saint. You now have Jimmy Garoppolo, who looks like he'll be the uh, one that's going to be driving the uh, semi truck, if you will, during the see the, the season that's coming up. Uh, Darren Waller goes and marries Kelsey Plum, which all of us found out that they were an item. And then several hours later, he is a New York Giant. So with you all having 12 picks and you being in the war room, Willie, that's coming up with this draft that's coming up in April. You have one pick that's in the first round, I believe, another pick in the second round and multiple picks. And, you know, and that includes compensatory picks. First round, you're looking, I believe y'all are number seven 
in the draft if they don't trade yes. it away or if they decide to trade up who knows because all kinds of fun excitement happens during nfl draft before the draft picks even drafted who should the las vegas raiders look at to add to their team in the first round well i'm not really big into doing mock drafts and mm -hmm. that is a mock draft type of question and i actually love it because we have enough needs on both sides of the ball that as long as Mike Mayock and John Gruden are not involved in this process, right? I think those guys, uh, Josh McFraud, I mean, Josh McDaniels. <laughs> and, <laughs> now, and, now, 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 now. <laughs> and, and David Ziegler, the GM. I mean, they, they, I think they halfway know what they're doing since they came from New England. Mm -hmm. um, the Raiders obviously need a quarterback for the future. Okay. And I don't know if any of those young guys are going to be available at seven. Mm -hmm. I have had, I've had, I've heard some stirrings that we try to move up to number one to get the bears number one overall pick, mm -hmm. uh, but they wanted a little too much. Um, you could, I, I believe that a team such as ours who has a whole bunch of dynamic weapons to include Josh Jacobs, Hunter Renfro, Devontae Adams, uh, we got Austin Hooper to replace uh, Darren Waller, and I'll talk about him in just a second. Mm -hmm. uh, we can, we need to go defensive tackle because we have two great edge rushers in Jones and Crosby. Or I we, agree with you on that. I or agree we, with you on that. Yeah, or we need to go uh, cornerback. And right now, from what I've seen, the cornerback from, from Oregon is on the board at number seven for us, Christian Gonzalez, which I wouldn't be mad at that that choice. Um, I also see that we're targeting the edge rusher from Texas Tech, which also would be a an okay choice because you can always put him uh, up on, on that on that line with Crosby and Jones. And who knows? I mean, Jones he he didn't get the sack numbers last year that we needed him to get, but he played the run very well. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that they're going to move him inside, but I could see some sort of intertwining with. Uh, with him maybe as an outside stand-up linebacker and maybe in a 3-4 defense. I don't know. We'll see. Right. But if you if you ask me which one did I want us to pick, um, I will say Gonzalez because uh, if you pair him with Nate Hobbs and if we can re-sign Rock Yassin, I think we would be set in secondary, at least from the cornerback standpoint. Oh, y'all haven't signed Rock Yassin yet? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Not yet. Oh, okay. Because I was thinking that was already a done deal. Well, shoot, if they get that and, you know, Christian Gonzalez at that seventh pick. Um, so if that all happens and and you're looking, you know, hopefully the Raiders will draft smart. I mean, anybody that's a fan of their particular team, you're hoping that the those in the war room, the upper office would draft smart. How are the chances? And I know that, uh, you know, obviously you need to see in the next several weeks of you know, what, uh, when all is said and done and everything, you know, all your 12 uh, picks, or if you happen to get more, again, it's the NFL draft. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think projecting, uh, how do you think Jimmy G will do for y'all this season coming up? Yeah, about that. <laughs> <laughs> about that. And, um, and, and quote, and, and quotes, can he stay healthy? End quote. Well, and, and I and I talk about that when we're in the off season or we're in preseason or spring training or whatever sport that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. I always try to put, you know, aside if we stay healthy because that yeah. bodes for everybody. Mm -hmm. So with all things be, being equal in terms of the injury front, if Jimmy G can, if Jimmy G is that dude that signed the twenty seven and a half million dollar a year court, uh, contract with the 49ers back in whatever year it was, mm -hmm. if we get that guy, then I will be okay. Yeah. Because we will have our quarterback for the next couple years. And I, what the Raiders are going to probably do is if we can't get one of those top guys, I mean, there's still other quarterbacks. And then next year's next year's quarter crop of quarterbacks is actually better than this one with Caleb Williams mm -hmm. down at SC and uh, some others. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I I think Jimmy G has enough around him on the offensive side, um, with Jacobs and 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 Adams and Renfro and um we got uh, another receiver I can't think of his name oh my gosh who was it oh um I think he came from New England 
not Aguilar, uh, golly, who was it? But anyway, there's enough around him. My concern is this. My concern is, is the concern of every Raider nation. And Raider fans are the illest. Let me tell you right now. The, the concern of every hashtag Raider Nation fan out there is what are we going to do on defense? Right. Offense has not been the issue. So mm-hmm. Jimmy G has enough players around him on offense, as we know, when he was in San Francisco. I mean, that defense, I'm not going to say it carried him, but they were the primary reason why they got to the Super Bowl and the NFC Championship games all those years. Right. So I, I think that with the right around him on the defensive side, we could see some things like we saw in San Francisco. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Just, you know, the Jimmy G that I remember seeing when Tom Brady was suspended those four games uh, that had a cannon of an arm uh, that made, you know, smart in-pocket decisions. Is he, you know, mobile in the pocket? Not necessarily, you know, quick, but he has a, a bullet of an arm. Concern again for me is the you know the health, you know can he stay healthy? The knee, the ankle, all of that. Um, I mean, if you get shades of that Jimmy G back, oh y'all are going to be an exciting team to watch for sure. Mm-hmm. Another thing coming up that we're all excited about, and I I I am with you on this is baseball is back, baby, mm-hmm. and we are ready for a new season. Your Oakland A's, how are they looking during spring training? Are are they going to be that team uh, this season? And part two of the question, who are your sleepers in the AL and the NL? Well, the Oakland A's, um, I, how much time do we got? You know, <laughs> I mean, I'm like, oh, my gosh. It's it's the narcotic that is East Bay sports. Mm-hmm. Um, the A's are clearly in rebuilding mode. Um, there's not there's no household names on this squad. Right. Ramon Laureano is probably the best player. Seth Brown is pretty good. Um, the pitching staff is young. Um, I don't really have a whole bunch of expectations for the A's this year. Mm-hmm. And it's a shame because when Bob Melvin went down the coast from Oakland to San Diego, and then they end up in the playoffs. And then last year, of course, they went all the way to the LCS. Um, it's a shame. So, but the thing with Oakland is that Oakland is not is not going to be Oakland too much longer. They will be moving to Vegas, and um, it's a, it's a shame, you know, for a person that grew up the first part of his life out there. Mm-hmm. That's where I first le- became in love with the sport of baseball. Uh, is when when the A's were playing out there, and my dad knew some of the players, and then the Raiders, of course. Um, this is going to be the first time in sixty years that there's going to be no professional team in the East Bay. And I don't foresee a team ever really going back there because the city is in such bad shape. Yeah. But uh, the a a, shame. Yeah. And it is a shame because those fans out there, well, the A's is a franchise. They deserve a new stadium. But the mm-hmm. city of Oakland, in my opinion, and from what my cousins have told me, um, the city of Oakland is so corrupt that there have been bonds that have been approved. But the city doesn't want to foot any of the bill for the new digs that the A's need. Mm. Um, so they're going to end up in Vegas. I mean, and this is, it is what it is. It's interesting uh, that Vegas is starting to flourish with sports teams, the professional sports teams. Mm-hmm. I never had pictured that in the back of my mind that Vegas would be the one like, you know, with the, the Raiders, obviously. And now, you know, an up and coming baseball team, you know, the Golden Knights of the NHL. So that's it. That is a interesting business move that, you know, all of that is happening in Las Vegas, a smart business move, my ad. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the city of Vegas gave Mark Davis $500 million to move the team there. Mm -hmm. So that was going to be a done deal no matter what. And they, there were, there were certain groups that were trying to keep, and I know we didn't got off topic, but there, there were certain groups, you know, that was tied to the Raiders at one point that was, that included Ronnie Lott. That yeah. were putting together groups and were trying to keep the Raiders at least in the area. There was a t- there's a town uh, south of Oakland called named Fremont. You know they were trying to get a stadium built there, but you know the Raiders wasn't having it. They were trying to get that money when they moved to Vegas, and that was an of course increased the value of the franchise. So you know the business part behind it. But going back to the A's and the AL and and my sleepers, you know I got a I got a season preview show out right now as a matter of fact hashtag brothers of baseball show 
And my sleeper team in the American League would probably be, I'm going to say the Angels. And the reason why is because when you have Shoei Otani, not just on the bump, but also at the when you have Mike Trout, and when you have who I what I hope to be a returning and healthy Anthony Rendon, who they got in the offseason after they won the World Series a couple years ago, mm -hmm. he's been out for the year for the last two seasons, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Those three dudes right there, um, they can put some runs on the board. And surrounded by their, their cast, um, they could be a sleeper team. Now, with the Angels, to me, it's either been it's either been feast or famine. Um, the A, I mean the uh, the AL West in terms of the Astros, they are the clear cut favorite. Um, the Mariners, we saw what they did last year by making a play mm -hmm. into the uh into the first round where they got swept by the Astros. Um, they're I think the Mariners are gonna be good, if not better, but will it be good enough? Uh, in terms of what everything else that we've seen across the landscape in baseball. Now, in the National League, um, several sleepers there because, and I don't really, I can't really say if they're sleepers because you had the Mets that won 101 games last year and finished in second place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the only week, the only reason why that was is because the, the last weekend series of the year, they went to Atlanta and dropped, I think it was either, they either got swept or dropped three or four. And mm -hmm. that pretty much clinched it for the Braves. Right. Then you had the Phillies, who was in the World Series last year, who nobody thought would be there. And then you have um, the Braves, of course. Um, you've got St. Louis. You've got Milwaukee. You've got San Diego, who is loaded. You've got the Dodgers. Um, I I'm going to say that a sleeper team would be the Chicago Cubs. Um, and the reason why that is is because— Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah, I mean they've got they've added some pieces. I mean they have Belling, uh, Cody, uh, uh, what's his, what's Kilby's last name? Um, from the Dodgers, they picked him up in the offseason, a one year deal. I think it was like twenty one million dollars. They got Dansby Swanson over from the Atlanta Braves. He signed a big deal from there. Yeah. So now they've added some very 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 quality bats, and Dansby Swanson is one of the best shortstops in the National League from a defensive standpoint. And they both bring over a lot of championship experience. So mm -hmm. that's why I say the Cubs. And you were right, Cody Bellinger. Cody Bellinger, yeah. Yep, you were correct. And Shohei Otani leading Japan in the uh, World Baseball Classic that had that win over the United States team. Um, yeah, those are those are some really good sleeper picks that you had. Like that is, I, I'm excited about this season. Something about it. I don't. I'm not sure about my Detroit Tigers yet because. You know, I, I watched a couple of their, of their their spring games and, you know, one of them was a loss and one of them, they just got blown out of the water. And I'm just like, okay, which team is going to show up? Which one is going to be amazing? And then, you know, it's Miggy's last year. He's going out in the blaze of gore, glory, I hope, and not a thud, I hope. Mm -hmm. Like, bubble wrap that man and keep him healthy because trying to see them when they come here to Texas. They got a couple of games here uh, when they play the Rangers. So I'm I definitely want to see him and hopefully be able to fly home uh, to my glorious city of Detroit and see him before he is uh, done with his re uh, retirement tour. But I want to, you know, get into some amazing guests that you've had on your show, Willie, and your... Does that include you? Uh, you are so awesome. It, it was a, it was absolutely amazing to be on your show, you know, and the thing I really want to give you your flowers about is that you um, include women, uh, women that, you know, hone in on their craft, women that, you know, talk about sports and everything, you include them in. And uh, I know that still, even though that we've seen many women broadcasters on um, well-known networks and, you know, have their own show or on their own podcast and everything else, still continually trying to prove and hone in on their craft and be taken seriously. Uh, so I definitely want to give you your flowers for that. And thank you for um, bringing females like myself and some incredible females on your show to discuss various topics of sports and, and beyond. So thank you for that. Well, it's my pleasure. And it's uh, definitely a blessing to include, you know, so many phenomenal people, women, you know, men, people that are same shade of color as us that are a little lighter than us, maybe even mm -hmm. a little darker than us. Um, <laughs> I'm just like, yo, you know what, if you, I, I Oh, Marissa, you going you trying to make me get emotional here. Um <laughs> You're you you are no yeah, I I'm trying not to get emotional because this is you are a person that started this journey in 2019. And 
had you not, again, we had said this on the show and I, I just really, really want somebody to grab this. Has you not taken a chance on yourself? You bet on yourself. You know, some people don't do that. They'll listen to the, the naysayers and those that say, you know, you're out of your league or you're past your prime because mm -hmm. we see a lot of people that maybe are color, but they're, you know, a younger, you know, trying to draw in the younger crowd, the younger generation into whatever their niche is, hockey, baseball, sports, but sports it, it is, is a universal language of all ages. And to have different people that are on there, women and men of all different uh, backgrounds and all different races on there to connect and draw from, you know, the audience that is listening and watching you do, you do that on your platform. And so it's, there would be no shake back media group. Have you not taken a bet on yourself, Willie? And that's why I wanted to recognize you and take this moment and recognize you for not only what you do, but opening the door for so many people as you continue to grow and as you continue to evolve yourself. So thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you for that. And, um, with without the um without the probability of breaking out into tears <laughs> this is this is this is let me tell you what the um let me tell you what the end goal is for us mm -hmm. we want to bring people together that have the 3 Cs 3 Cs are character commitment and consistency if you have those three things i can work with you mm -hmm. if you have one of those things or if you have one of those three i can't work with you mm. if you have two of the three i can't work with you you have to have all three um and the lord spoke that to me you know a while back and you know he he has broadened it because it starts with the relationships the relationships in my own home you mm -hmm. know we get so busy and we're doing all these different things and there's sometimes there's things that just get get lost in the cracks but mm -hmm. um i i want the shake back media group to be a true reflection of what america is of what america is supposed to be let me put it that way right right and i am not a politician but for anybody out there that will be wa that's watching this and has any sort of cachet, um, what I am going to say is this. Be careful whose head you step on top of mm -hmm. to get to the top because you can you can rest assured that on your way back down, you're say going that. to pass that same person. Say that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so say that's that. what that's about. Yeah, and, and, and that is, that's 100% key, and that is so true. Uh, the people that you've had on your show, uh, you've had not only, you know, a group of people that talk about, you know, various things, baseball, sports, uh, you know, whatever current season that we're in or out of season, you know, and getting ready to go into whatever draft it is. Uh, but I love the segment where you showcase some of the athletes that you've had on your show, their mothers, uh, uh -huh. because the mothers have had, you know, obviously they know about their athlete more than us, you know, as their child. Uh, and, and that segment that you had, and I, I definitely want people to check that out. It, it's just so how you connect with them and them so comfortable on your platform, sharing about, you know, raising their son, raising their daughter and, you know, them in, in tapping in and honing in into, into their gift or whatever the sport they're in. Um, I, I just love the fact that your show, your platform is more than just about sports that you'll go there when it talks about someone's story. You'll go there and talk about when it's somebody and their mental health and their journey and everything. So I want to ask you, Willie, because you've done so many incredible interviews, uh, who would you like to, who is your dream interview? Uh, because you, like I said, you've been out there in, in different facets of sports and, you know, here in Texas and you've been, you know, to the Rangers where they play and everything else. Who would be your ultimate dream interview that you would love to have on your show? Because, you know, we're going to manifest that, you know, this is going to be everywhere. So everybody that's going to be listening on the podcast platforms and YouTube, hopefully that person or persons uh, will reach out and contact you. You never know. It doesn't have to be in sports, does it? It does not have to be in sports. Okay. You know, when we, let me preface this by saying this, and I appreciate the question. It's such a great question. 
Um, we've been celebrating women's history all month with the show. It ain't even got a name. It's just celebration of women's history. That's what it is. Yeah. And we've had so many terrific ladies on throughout the month. We got two episodes left, one on Tuesday night, and then the last one on Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the guests had said that they wanted to, uh, well, one of, the, one of the questions was, the precedents that we've seen from women throughout the past few years, mm -hmm. which one stands out to you the most? And somebody said Michelle Obama. And I would love to have a conversation with Michelle Obama. Why is that? Because she was, number one, she's a woman that looks like my mom. Okay. Mm -hmm. She's a woman that looks like my wife. She's a woman that looks like my sisters. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean my sisters by blood. I mean, sisters by relationship mm -hmm. like you. Mm -hmm. So being that is what it is. And being the, the wife of the most powerful man, in all of the free world mm -hmm. and the way that she handled such things with elegance and grace yes. and class. I think I gained a whole bunch more measure of respect for her when she started talking about her bout with mental illness. Mm -hmm. And that's where, you know, as a person that can relate to being diagnosed with a mental illness, I can be touched with that infirmary. And that would be a conversation that may not have a whole lot of words because I think it would have a lot of tears flowing around it because, yeah. um, you know, where we are is not where we're going, but where we come from has everything to do with where we're going to end up. Mm -hmm. And for, you know, her story and, and, and the things that we've seen in terms of the, do the documentary that they did, mm -hmm. I would really like to dive in deeper you know, and go back to her roots and find out the root issues or the root causes or the 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 do denominators that cause the things or that she talks about. Um, because I think in some sort of way, I could I could be like, yo, Michelle, I feel you, girl. I feel you. Yeah. Um, so that would be an incredible and I wouldn't be nervous. I can tell you that now. Mm -hmm. I would not be nervous because I think who, you'd be in your element for whoever sure. Whoever yeah. I talk, whoever I talk to whoever I talk to, mm -hmm. I'm going to, cause I want to make them feel comfortable. I want exactly. them to be okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that's not to say, I shouldn't say I wouldn't be nervous. I obviously would be nervous. I mean, I'm nervous now on your show, <laughs> but I've learned, but no, seriously, I've learned yeah. how to manage it. So when the lights come on, you know, you really can't see it. Yeah. You may be able to hear it sometimes, but you mm -hmm. necessarily can't see it. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I would, um, I, I would just, relish in the fact that you know i would just ask her some questions like yo you know what was it like growing up in chicago and growing up in the hood and then you know next thing you know you're the you're the first lady of the world yeah and it, it it's incredible and then how you managed to be such a an adoring mom and such a, a terrific wife mm -hmm. um but how are you as an individual and as a woman as a lady uh, yeah. aside from being a mom and a husband so she would be she would be that one and inside of sports my favorite player in basketball of all time is isaiah thomas um i patterned my game after him so much i just could not get those extra six inches in my height that i needed to get to where he was <laughs> okay hold but, on pause which isaiah thomas the one with two a's or the one with one there's only one isaiah thomas there you go okay i just want to so, make sure i want to this, clarify this new Isaiah Thomas, I mean, I ain't talking about him. He got he the same height as me. Detroit Pistons finest for those that are watching and is listening. I just want people to know. Zeke yeah. nickname. Bad Isaiah boys, Thomas. back to back championships. Thank you. Just want yes. to have right to know. <laughs> yes. And I, I would definitely ask him some questions about the whole era from nineteen eighty seven to nineteen ninety one. Mm -hmm. And those those losses to Boston and you know, you, you became the big brother of the block and then you got beat by the Bulls, who I absolutely hated. Mm -hmm. I absolutely hated the Bulls. That's why you I still hated it because they were so good. No, I was like, hate, oh, my gosh, can y'all just lose Michael Jordan? Why don't you suck? <laughs> I hate I hated Michael Jordan. Yes, same. I hated him. Now, he's the greatest. of He's, he's, he's the greatest the of greatest, all time. 
He's the, well, he's the greatest I've ever seen in his prime. Mm -hmm. I like yes. to use that yes. instead of the greatest of all time because I never saw Will Chamberlain. I never saw Bill Russell play in his prime. Mm -hmm. So I say the greatest I've ever seen. And it ain't even close. I have a. I and we were proud days. to see it. We were we grew up seeing the you know Michael Jordan play at his finest. Like we we were honored to see that. I mean, when I see the replays and these young kids now see the you know the throwback Chicago Bulls you know Boston Celtics game or Chicago Bulls Detroit Pistons games, and I'm like, oh, y'all seeing it, but y'all were not there live to see it. There's a, there's a big difference, and it's just like, oh my gosh, I just. I just take that moment of gratitude and saying, oh my gosh, I was born at the right time. Yeah. <laughs> because we were so blessed to see it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's the greatest I've ever seen between, actually I have Michael and then Kareem and then LeBron. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because the whole thing between Michael Jordan and LeBron James, the debate was settled in two different um, parts of the discussion. Number one, you have never seen Michael Jordan disappear at the biggest part of the game or series. AKA load matter. management. Hello. Yeah. But he, 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 now that's a, that's a, that's, that's a, a whole different topic. That's a whole different topic. But in terms of the biggest, when you're needed the big or the most at mm -hmm. the biggest point of any game or any series, we Facts. never saw Michael Jordan disappear. Facts. We saw LeBron James disappear too many times. Number two, you ain't never seen nobody just back off of Michael Jordan, just give him open jumpers. Wasn't going to happen. Not at all. We've seen that with LeBron James. And then third and finally, since people want to say, well, it's not all about the championships, but this one is going to be about the championships because you can't be considered to be the greatest of all time or one of the greatest that you've a person's ever seen if you have failed more times at the pinnacle of your sport mm -hmm. than you've succeeded. Here. Can't happen. And I'll give a runner up to that is Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant was a workhorse. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Kobe Bryant was a wor workhorse. Like just, if you ain't up to his speed, if you don't want to win, if you don't want to work hard, if you don't want to get up early and go to bed late, he he he's going to call you soft every single time. Well, he that, gonna, that he... man was in, absolutely incredible. His career, all of it. Well, what he's not going to do is pass you the ball. That's what he's not going to do. He's not going to. That's what he said about Shaq in that series against the uh, against the Pistons back in 04. Yeah. You know, Shaq can't do nothing. I'm I gotta take over this game. And 99% of the time when he takes over the game, what happens? They end up winning. Yeah. Well, maybe Every not 99%, time. but yeah, a great, a great percentage. <laughs> a strong 97.3. <laughs> yeah, we'll take that. Sounds like a radio station. <laughs> I got let, you. Let me ask you this. Uh this put one of my final questions for you. Um, because you are a life coach. And like I said, you have inspired so many people that you have contacted with and, you know, and athletes and those that are coming up and everything. If you were to give advice to those that are getting ready to be drafted in the NFL, uh, because, you know, you got their life is going to be changed immediately. You know, if, if they were to come onto your platform, you know, and they want to come on to the Shakeback Media Group, you know, Willie Epting Jr., you know, and they looked at you and you're like, my life is going to change. I know I'm good at my craft. I know that, you know, a lot of money is going to come through and everything else. What is the solid piece of advice that was given to you, Willie, that you would pass on to them? Oh, man, you should have let me have some time before you <laughs> ask that question. All that wisdom that you got, I know you got something. <laughs> yeah, um, thank you, uh, I think. Um <laughs> <laughs> I think the number one thing that I was told was um, don't be humble, stay humble. Um, if you stay humble, you don't have to get humble. So mm -hmm. that's the first thing. Um, work hard, of course, all of the normal cliches, but here's the piece that I would throw in for free. Do not allow proving what you're not to keep you from being who you are. Well, that's good. And what that means basically is this, Marissa, is that, you know, you may have, you, you may have been a role, you may be a role player. Okay. And that's okay. Because everybody can't be the star. Everybody can't be Marissa. Everybody can't be Patrick Mahomes. You know, everybody can't do that. So, if you are a role player, embrace 
who you are or what you are and don't do anything to try to prove that you're not that because you're needed just as much as Josh Allen is needed. You're needed just as much as Lamar Jackson is needed. You're needed just as much as Marissa Tigney is needed. So never prove, keep from, you know, never um, trying to prove what you're not keeping, keep you from being who you are. That is good. That is good. That is, that is very, very good. Listen, I need people to connect with you. I need people to follow you and uh, see what you're doing and what you are, what your media group is going to do. Uh, I'm looking, definitely. I'm, I, I need, I need people to follow you. Yes, sir. And, and all of the things that's going to be happening for your Las Vegas Raiders and your Oakland A's this season coming up and in the fall. So how can they stay connected with you, sir, on your, drop your social media? All right. Uh, I got a book coming out too. And that yeah, you quote, do. Come on, yeah, author. That, it's <laughs> He's called, got a book coming out. <laughs> it's called Shake Back, Transform Life Lessons, a book of inspirational quotes. Okay. Um, 99% of the quotes are mine and mm-hmm. probably another 1% I've gotten from somewhere else. Mm-hmm. But the ones that are mine, um, they were inspired by somebody else and I was able to be spoken to and put them down on paper. Um, okay, platforms. Let's see. Twitter, thank you to the 10,000 goats out there. Let's go. He's at 10K, people. He just hit 10K on Twitter. Very nice. Let's get Marissa there, too, because things start happening when you get to 10K. Um, At Shakeback Media Group, that's um, S-H-K-B-K-M-E-D-I-A. Wait a minute. Yeah, G-R-P. So it was Shakeback Media Group, but condensed. That's on Twitter. On Instagram, it's spelled out Shakeback Media Group. YouTube, the Shakeback Media Group, Facebook, the Shakeback Media Group, TikTok, SBMG 11. Um, I think that's all of them. And uh, the shows, there's there's quite a few of them. I mean, we got the Real Moms of the Shield just wrapped up the first season on that. We actually have a new mom coming on for the second season. Uh, the Shakeback uh, Sports Show on the Big Game Christian Sports Network. Shakeback Sports Show OT Podcast. We have the Hashtag Brothers of Baseball Show. Uh, we have a show divided. That's with Tisha C and myself. She's Great show. Chiefs. Great show. She's a Chiefs fan. I'm a Raider fan. Just wrapped up the first season there. Uh, Don't Jump the Podcast with Patrice Epting is coming out very soon. And I feel like I'm missing one. Oh, of course. The Ballers Report Podcast. So, all on the Shake Back Media Group. Hit us up. He is growing. He is evolving. He has amazing people that surround him and see his vision. And it continues to evolve and grow. Do not be surprised. You see the Shake Back Media Group on the networks real soon because I feel that it is coming. It is coming. It is coming. Receive. Willie Epting Jr., thank you so much for coming on the show today and sharing your story, sharing your inspirations. Uh, I'm excited for you, fam. I know that big things are going to continue to happen for you. Um, and, and I'm looking forward to all the great things that are going to be happening for you in 2023. I, I I'm rooting for you, and I can't wait to see what happens. You're coming, too. Come on. Let's Let's go. go. I receive it. And thank you, all those that were listening and watching. I appreciate it. And as I always end the show, take care. Stay safe. We out of here.